Dear students, today we will discuss a new phylum, phylum Platyhelminthes. And this phylum Platyhelminths it includes the flatworms. Commonly, the animals of this phylum are named flatworms, as their bodies leaf-like, dorsoventrally, body is flat. Dear students, the PDF file of all these notes have been uploaded in the description of video lecture. Please note down your notes. In today's lecture, we will discuss phylum platyhelminths, plate-like, flat worms, leaf-like, the worms. This term platyhelminths, it was coined by Gigenbar. No down, no down competition students, 1859. This term platyhelminthes, it was coined by Gigenbar 1859. It includes, means this phylum platyhelminths, it includes about 13,000 living species. In today's lecture, we will discuss biodiversity, general characters of this phylum platyhelminthes. First of all, we will discuss habitat. These platyhelminths are grouped in three categories. First is turbellarians, planarians, and these planarians are commonly found in free habitats. These are free living forms. Some are freshwater forms, and freshwater forms like Dugasia, like planaria. Some planarians are marine forms, like Thysanozoo. And some are terrestrial. It means these planarians are found in all conditions. In fresh water, some are marine form and some are terrestrial forms like Bipallium geoplana. These are terrestrial forms. Second group, second class of this phylum platyal minthes that is trematoda and in these trematodes are commonly named flukes for example liver fluke fasciola and these trematodes these are dear students may be ectoparasites or endoparasites as in case of liver fluke that is an endoparasite and the third group of this phylum platyhelminths are cystoda, cystodes. Commonly, these are named tapeworms. Their body is segmented. These are tapeworms. And these are exclusively endoparasites. Example, very common tapeworm that is Tinea solium, Achinococcus. Dear students, first property, first characteristic feature of this phylum platyhelminths habitat. We have categorized this phylum in three groups. First is planarians, turbellarians, and these are free living forms which are found in fresh water. Some are marine forms, maybe terrestrial. And the second group that is trematoda. These are commonly named flukes. Competitive exam students, these trematoda, these are flukes, like liver fluke. These are strictly these are parasites, maybe ectoparasites or endoparasites. And the third class is that is cystoda. And these sister cystodes are commonly named tapeworms. They are students, tapeworms like Tinea solia, Achinococcus, and these are exclusively endoparasites. Second, characteristic feature of this phylum platyhelminths, body form. Dear students, the body forms, these are flat worms, 
their body is dorsal ventrally dorsal surface as well as ventral surface these are dorsal ventrally flat forms like a leaf their body may be leaf like as in case of liver fluke the body is leaf like the body may be segmented as in case of tapeworms the entire body possesses external segments no internal segmentation externally body is segmented and the segments of body not down not down competition students these segments are named proglottids in case of tapeworm the body externally the body gets segmented and these segments are developed due to budding these are named proglottids example very clear the tapeworm tinea solia and this animal consists of about 850 to 1000 pro proglottids segments level of organization very important very important characteristic feature of this phylum first time in level of organization organs and organ systems double it means in this phylum platyhelminths in these flatworms in these flukes tapeworms and planarians the organs and organ system level of organization and the body plan is that is blind sac body plan it means the body consists of only one opening which acts as for ingestion as well as ejection of food symmetry first time dear student first time in this phylum the symmetry is bilateral body cavity not down each and every point very important for competitive exams body cavity there is no coelom these platyhelminths these flat worms are acelomate without any silo the space present between the body wall and body organs and that space gets filled with connective tissue which is mesodermal in origin and that connective tissue not down not down competition student that connective tissue is named mesenchyme or it is parenchyma very important points very important points and this parenchyma helps in circulation of nutrient material cephalization first time in this phylum cephalization means formation of head it means the anterior part of body gets organized into a head and that head consists of dear students look here in this head region an aggregation of sense organs and brain it means this is the first phylum platyhelminths in which organs organ system level of organization the symmetry first time it is bilateral and not on the point of coelom strictly these are acelomates without any coelom no true body cavity no coelom but the space present between the body wall and organs and that space is filled with a connective tissue which is mesodermal in origin and that connective tissue is not down competition student that is mesenchyme or it is parenchyma and that parenchyma involves in the transport of nutrient substances that acts as a circulatory system cephalization first time in this phylum head double that is an aggregation of sense organs and brain germ layers first time first time from this phylum all three germ layers means entire body is derived from three germ layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm means these platyhelminths these flat worms these planarians flukes and tapeworms a triploblastic before this phylum we have studied 
phylum porifera diploblastic phylum cylindrata diploblastic but in this phylum all the animals are triploblastic entire body gets derived from three germ layers acto meso and endoderms skeleton each and every point very important dear students skeleton these are soft bodied animals and there is no exo no endoskeleton strictly absent only the body fluid and we have discussed the body fluid is parenchyma that is a special type of connective tissue which is mesodermal in origin and that connective tissue is parenchyma that acts as that maintains body shape it is hydraulic skeleton means the fluid that maintains shape of the body it is hydraulic skeleton next point each and every point very important note down all competition students digestive system generally the flux and tapeworms are parasites and the tapeworms these are exclusively endoparasites as tapeworm that lives in our gut elementary canal dear students not down in case of tapeworms in case of tinea in case of acinococcus there is no gut no elementary canal no gut there is absent totally elementary canal digestive system is lacking and other forms in which digestive system elementary canal is present that is incomplete means only one opening there is no anus only mouth is there and it acts as ingestion as well as ejection respiration dear students respiration as we know these are generally parasites it means most of flux and tapeworms these are parasites there is no respiratory system these are strictly anaerobic in respiration their mode of respiration no uptake of oxygen anaerobically they respire but not down these planarias turbellarias these are free living forms these are aerobic in respiration and that gas is exchanged takes place through their general body surface without any respiratory organs means in these simple forms organs are there but no circulatory system no dear students respiratory system as well as circulatory system that is absent only the body fluid and that special body fluid parenchyma that circulates in the body and which helps in the transportation of nutrient substances excretory system very important very important for all competitive exams in case of platyal means in these flat worms these special type of excretory organs and these special type of structures which appear as flame like these are named flame cells dear students these are named protonephridia look here in this diagram each flame cell consists of a bundle of cilia and this bundle of cilia gives an appearance of a flame these are named flame cells and on this outer surface these are numerous cytoplasmic process are there and each cell consists of a nucleus and in this lumen cavity this bundle of cilia so the appearance like a flame next very important very important this lecture is nervous system not down again the question for competitive exams in this phylum special type of nervous system first time nervous system appears which is ladder like dear students ladder like it consists of one two nerve cords and these nerve cords are longitudinal which extend from this anterior region up to the posterior last region two nerve cord in our body our nerve cord is single but in these platyal means these one two longitudinal 
narcodes are there and these both narcodes are interconnected by transverse commissures in these platyhelminths the nervous system that is ladder type it is ladder like two narcodes throughout the length these are longitudinal narcodes and both are transversely connected by transverse commissures in this anterior region head region cephalization in this head region brain is there and the brain it is formed by the fusion of a pair of cephalic ganglia and in this lateral sides these several lateral nerves develop so dear students in today's lecture we have discussed several characteristic features of phylum platyhelminths in tomorrow's lecture we will discuss more characteristic features and economic importance of platyhelminths thank you